All right, so I'm gonna show you guys today um, how I cut a, uh, my duck call tenons. So I know some of you guys have asked about uh, the wrench that I use. Um, this is not an original idea to me. I, I learned this from some other guys. It's a good way to get pretty standard size on your tenons when you're freehand cutting them. Um, sometimes you can cut too small or, or things like that and it, it just kind of throws off the fit. So what I do, and I'll, I'll show you this in more detail as I go, but um, what I'll do is I take my boxed in wrench and I've sharpened it on this, this short edge. So you, each of these little, um, these little ends of the, of the boxed in wrench, one, this is the longer end, so I sharpened it right here. Um, and what I'll do is when I get down, I'll turn my, my, my tenon freehand and get pretty close to 5 eighths. And then what I'll do is I'll, I'll back my, my tool rest out and I'll press it up against the tenon that I've already started turning. And what will happen is I'm kind of, I'll be giving it some pressure on this bottom piece as it's cutting. And then when that tenon gets to cut, cuts down to just five eighths, it'll, it'll, it kind of slips in like that and it stops cutting. So basically you're using this, uh, this width here, this five eighths width to, uh, to get you to a pretty consistent size. Now I will do after I've cut it down to that point, sometimes I will freehand a little bit more just to get it to, uh, turned down just to the right size that I need. Um, you can do that with sandpaper, you know, if you only need to take off just a little bit, those kinds of things. Um, but you can do this with pretty much any size box wrench. I've got one of uh, three quarters done the same thing with, just sharpen off the edge uh, of the short side. And um, it, makes a, it makes a pretty good tool for um, for cutting those tenons like that. So anyway, I'll show you guys a little bit about how I do the uh, do the tenons. I've got that turned down to a pretty good size overall. So I'm gonna do some measuring for the length of the tenon. Everybody has their own dimensions they use when they're making a call. So you know this is this is one of those things you have to find the right length for the tenons or the, the inserts, things like that that you need to use or you like to use. But um, Everybody has their own, their own preferences. All right, let's see. Now what I'm gonna do now, is I'm gonna take this down pretty close to 5 eighths. I'm gonna try not to go less than 5 eighths. I'm gonna get down just a little bit bigger. Now, I know that's not five eighths, but what you can do is as you get close, you can just kind of just touch that wrench to the to the tenon as it's turning. And just to double check, you know, I'm getting fairly close to five eighths. I'm going to turn a little bit more down just so there's less meat to take off with the uh, with the wrench. I think that's getting pretty close. So 
So what I do is I'll back my my tool rest up just because of the there's a lot of space here I've got to put in between the tool rest and the uh, the tenon. That's about the right length or right distance. So what I do is, like I said, I put the uh, the long the long tip underneath the tenon, and the sharpened tip will be on top. So it'll be turning and cutting against that top piece. And what you want to do, you can see I'm already touching it before I even get the the sharpened tip to it. I'm going to be pressing up, keeping that that pressure up on the bottom, so that it's uh, it doesn't bite in too hard on this sharpened piece and then as soon as it cuts it to just the right diameter it'll slip inside there just like that and stop cutting There you go. So you can see now I've got a 5 8 tenon all the way down, but you see it's got these little lines in it. And that's just because as I'm cutting, I'm only cutting a little bit at a time. I'm probably cutting probably half the width of the wrench. So I know just from the time that my experience with turning these that I need to cut just a little bit more off. And typically I will use a skew just to, to take a little bit down, smooth it out, and then I'll start I'll sand it a little bit and then we'll cut our uh, the o-ring grooves. Now that looks a lot better. Now, what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna mark the spots for my O-rings. Now I use two O-rings on my inserts. And so what I have, this is actually the, um, my original wooden jig that I created years ago. And um, I still use it today on every duck call I make. Um, after I freehanded my, you know, the, my first duck calls and got them sounding exactly the way I liked, I had made a jig off of it out of wood, and I used this for several years to uh, to cut my to cut my tenons, and also to uh, to cut the the tone board itself. So, I'll make another video maybe one day about that, showing that process because I know a lot of times guys ask about you know what do they need to to be able to make a duck call, what are, what kind of tools and equipment, and you can buy a lot for what you need to make a duck call with, but then again you can also make a lot. Um, and so if money is, is an, you know, a concern, if, um, you know, wanting to get into something brand new, like making duck calls, it can be very expensive to buy all the equipment and the, the tools and things that you need. So, um, I'm, I'm big on making my own if I can. And then, um, you learn a lot that way as well. But what I do now is the first thing I'll take is this wooden jig. You see, I've got some marks. If I can show you, I've got a couple of marks here that um, that's that's my marks for where I like my o-rings to be so really what I do and sometimes I do this with the with the the lathe on but I just rest it up against here and I butt it all the way up against the back of this um, kind of the shoulder where the the bell of the the duck call insert is going to be but I'll just mark it just like that and um and the reason I'll do it with the lathe on is because it just marks the line around for me so I'll Butt it up against there, touch it right against that line. And now I know exactly where I like my, my duck call inserts uh, to have their, their O-ring grooves. 
Now something else I do, I told you I like to make my own tools. This is a, a half inch um, auger bit or spade bit, some people call it. All I did was I took it to the grinder and I cut, you can see I kind of cut the, the tips of it off on each side and I sharpened it on both sides if you can tell it's sharpened on each side and I learned again this is not a new idea to me but I learned it uh, from some other guys I've seen um, but anyway the, the width of that spade bit is a good width for making um, you know o-ring grooves or you can use it as a parting tool for, for the turnings you make on your lathe so homemade tools and I just put it um, just an old piece of wood, I think it's a piece of cypress. And, uh, or maybe a red cedar, I think. But I turned it into a, a handle. I epoxied that spade bit down in there. And I have used this thing for years and years. So when I'm cutting my tenons, I'm sorry, when I'm cutting my O-rings on my tenons, I'm using that line and I know I like to cut it right behind that line. I'm gonna test it first before I sand with the grain or before I keep sanding more. Once I get it fitting in this jig really well, I know I'm pretty much there. Oh yeah, that's good. And if you can see, there's really not much, there's not much gap at all right through here. And that's what you want. You don't want it to be too loose. Um, you want it to fit in there pretty easily you don't want to have to, to force it in, but um, you don't want it to be too loose in the jig. And what that does is that helps, once you drill your tone channel right down the center of your, of your tone board, if you've got a good fit with the jig, that's gonna keep that tone channel centered right in. If you think about it like this way, it'll sit right where you want it to be down the center. If you have a really small tone, uh, tone channel here, or if you have a really small, um, tenon it's going to sit lower in that jig which means the tone channel is also lower in the jig so when you put it in and, and screw it down when you cut this then it's going to give you a deeper tone channel which affects the sound um, and how you know how difficult it is to get a good uh, duck call sound out of your, your insert so you know, the, the general rule of thumb or the saying for, for inserts or duck calls in general is everything affects everything. So the more standard you can be and more precise and consistent in every aspect of your, of your turning, the better your, uh, your duck calls are gonna come out or at least the more consistent they'll be. All right, let me do a double check and I, I feel pretty confident it's gonna fit well within the barrel because it fits in the jig real well. But yeah, that, look, that looks good. It slides right in. Um, I can put it in there and kind of try to wiggle it back and forth and it moves just a little, but not very much at all. So that's good. One more check I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put this O-ring back on and I'm gonna check that O-ring depth. The tenon itself, the size of the tenon is good. I just want to make sure the O-rings fit good and snug inside the, uh, inside the barrel. That actually feels pretty good. 
it's not going to let it come out and that's just with one o-ring in it gives a good airtight seal it's not putting a lot of pressure on the barrel and i always check the second one as well check them both so i'm gonna roll that o-ring down to the to the bottom and i'm gonna check again yep i like it that fits good okay all right guys so that's how i use a 5 8 boxed in wrench to uh, size and cut my my tenons so um, if you guys have any questions about that um, questions about the tools i use the ones i've made how i made it things like that um, let me know and i'll be happy to answer them i hope it helps some of y'all out